You're still muted. You're muted, Paul. Maybe I need to. Right. Oh, okay. Yep. There. There. Yeah. So I was going to go to virtual, but it won't work. So. All right. Well, um, any questions right off the bat, or I'll just start. You know. Anyone? Uh, John. John K. John K. Uh, I don't want to take one from him. Next. <laughs> Bring John K up. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually, I was thinking about the, the fuck it thing even before you were talking. And maybe it's the holiday. But it seems like there's like a, like a thin line between. Thinking is the fuck it thing. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Get my Perceived. head around that. When it's preceded with my. Yeah, my thinking is the. Yeah. Huh. But it seems like the relief and the lighterness, the traveling lighter from not caring or not like not taking seriously or I forget how you say it, but like things that were a problem aren't a problem anymore is just is just a delight. Absolutely. And though or along with that or next to that is like it seems like a thin line between that and fuck it. Though, and I'm trying to make a specific example and having a hard time coming up with that right now, but it, it's a feeling like if I, uh, I guess I just let it, let it, I, I don't really, I guess I don't know if it's like a fuck it that leads to bad consequences or a good consequence thing where, wow, I'm free now, or right now I'm free of whatever had me by my concern. And I guess I don't know until later whether, and what does it matter if I know? I, I'm, I'm confusing myself now, even in my question here, but I'm, uh, it's like, I guess I'm suspicious of the good feeling of the, of the burden lifting, but I also can see like the fuck it, like in my case, going to the Eli chocolate or something like that is how it shows up. And, and the sugar and all that, like you said. And it's like, there's a silver, it, it, it's hard to distinguish between the fuck it and just the feeling of relief that comes from like, wow, I, I really can't accomplish my sister and whatever. I guess it's okay that she thinks the way she thinks or I'm not so bothered by that. I'm sorry, I'm not having a question here that's formulating well, Paul. Um, no, you are actually. Okay. You are. Yeah, because uh, a certain condition claimed by self to be the observer of it can be called fuck it. Like the selfing may name that that neutral position as fuck it, as indifference. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. indifference, but the way it will translate it, it will say it's indifference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, so it's the same thing with like surrender, surrender or admitting that you're powerless. If the self rush, if not the self, but the selfing claims to be that, that there's a one that's uh, going to be surrendered and gives it a terrible meaning, like, fuck, you know, I'll never get what I want. I'm just going to have to yeah. fit myself around these terrible circumstances yeah. and not... Yeah. It's all ignorance, you know, based on the myopic view of selfing. Yeah. So it will look at, you know, like we used to say in AA, you know, you, you put an alcoholic into heaven, it'll be hell in a day. Yeah. So it's not there's a heaven or hell, it's us. Yeah. We're the, we're the act of giving everything all the meaning it has. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a fine line in a way based on what's interpreting it. Yeah. What's interpreting or reacting to the, the, the experience or the state or whatever, that feeling of presence to the mental state, it's boring as hell. It wants to fill that space up. Yeah. Hmm. It wants you to do something. 
Maybe it wants you to do something to arrive at presence, but it won't let you enjoy presence. <laughs> but it may use, it may whip you into action saying you've got to do yourself into presence. <laughs> yeah. You ever notice like, uh, I remember when I would meditate, you would be meditating for quite a while and then there would be a certain like neutral pause and then you immediately, the head wanted to get up, you know, I yeah. got to do laundry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got to yeah. make some cookies for my aunt, call her, whatever. No, just what you mean, yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? So it loves to be the one that's going towards the presence or the peace, but it can't, it's like a, it's like a drop of water on a hot Skittle when it, it just can't take it. Yeah, that's the good news. You're not that. Mm. <laughs> so it will plan a lifelong journey to arrive at where it doesn't want to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you better, you better realize if it's sort of directing the journey, it's going to sort of drag its proverbial feet <laughs> because it doesn't want to arrive at that. It may have a story that you really do and you're very earnest and sincere, but yeah. it doesn't. And its agenda may be the overriding factor, you know, unbeknownst to us. Yeah. yeah. If it's unbeknownst to us, it is the overriding factor. Yeah. When you see its agenda, not from its agenda, yeah, you'll see its little, its little plans and designs, like we say in recovery. Yeah. Now, if you see the, the plans and designs from self, they're always big plans and designs. But if you see them outside, they're little plans and designs. Yeah. Just as little as the little plans and designs you think your girlfriend has. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yes, just stay with it, bro. And there's a there's an overriding faith, like in my sense there was a, a day where I was at a satsang and it just was like a knowing before wanting to know, you know, and it, and it had a large enough tarmac to land and unload. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like a short little hit and back up. Yeah. 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 And so uh, like, like the big Lebowski says, faith abides, whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's helpful. It's true. So there's something in all of us. There's faith in all of us. It's not in us, but as us. Yeah. It just needs to be directed by something other than what's directing it now. Yeah. That's why when in, I was in recovery, I am in recovery. You know, I'd look around the room and say, you know, I probably could turn my life over to not everyone, but most people. And they would do a better job with it than I do. Why is that? When I have so keen interest in promoting myself, it's actually, yeah. the, it's the avenue of being defeated. Yes. Yeah? So if I yeah. just gave my life over to a dog catcher, they would do a better job with it than I ever did. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta see what's the message in all those observations. They're not just observations. They're a message. There's a message in it. Yeah. There's a message in it. There's a message in everything, really. But there's a message, and sometimes the message uh, starts building up to a critical mass against this obstruction called time, yeah? And then something, the house of cards falls down, and it doesn't fall down on you. You see it as from another distance, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And then you have all this space for something else to appear fucking far out. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. See, all of this comes from becoming clear about something, about what you are and what you're not. You can't become clear about what you are by trying to be what you are. That's an unclear approach. You become clear about what you are by becoming clear about what you're not. That's how it works. Yeah. This isn't a direct, see, it's sort of like a it's sort of like a logic that you run into recovery. When you first come into recovery of, from drugs and alcohol to a program, and maybe you've got someone's ear, 
And then you're just bitching about all the situations you're in that there's no escape from, you know? You got three court dates, the wife left with the kids, you have no money, and you go on for 30 minutes, and then the person says, uh, why don't you go to a meeting? And you're going, what does the meeting, going to a meeting, have to do with what I just presented? I need a solution to this. And they go, go to a meeting. Yeah, this is exactly like it in a weird way. You don't find out what you are by studying it as what you're not. You don't. You find out about what you are by studying what you're not <laughs> and realizing you're not that. Yeah, that's the whole history, really, of Neti Neti from the Vedas, the old, oldest scripture in the, mm -hmm. in the seeming world. Neti Neti was not this, not this. So you keep not this in, and then you end up with where you already are. <laughs> hey, Jesus, that, that which I, I'm seeking must be what I am, because not this, not yes. The, the this is dwindle after a while, and you're left with I am this. Yeah, I am that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not the book either, but I am yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're just... Uh, See, non-duality a lot of times, and innocently, gets, it gets formatted in the same programming that everything runs through here, self-centeredness, yeah? So now non-duality becomes another way of self trying to get an advantage here. So, and now it's come to the point, it ha it's tried so many things, it says, I think I should try non-self. If I can become a non-self, I'll be a better, greater, definitely much more brighter than other people, yeah? So yeah, So now there's this giant drive to be a non-self but as a self, yeah? So that needs to be warned about, yeah? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, we need to have warnings about the how the head is gonna use this message because it's gonna attempt to use it for sure, yeah? That's the first video we ever made was the, the lion sheep video. The first one at my friend's place in San Francisco. Had no idea we were going to do that. We'd finally videoed something and that's what came out because that's, that was what was important. Yeah. Is the recognition that if you're already a lion, but not aware of that or seemingly not aware of it, it does, it actually, is a disservice to keep studying about lions. You need yeah. to study about what you think you are, a sheep, and realize you're not that. Yeah. So that yeah. way, that way the message gets to the lion. Yeah. Even though you watch it get waylaid and turned by the sheep, it still doesn't make it so. See? Because you are the message. You don't really need to hear the message. Yeah, you are the message, yeah? You need to hear the message about what you're not. You don't need to hear the message about what you are. You don't. You are it. Why? It would yeah, be like yeah. piling on. Yeah, yeah, it would be like piling on. And then what you piled on would be a disservice. You'd be heavy yeah, yeah. Uh, knowing what, you're not, what you are. You would be. If you had knowledge of what you are, it would produce a heaviness as being it. Yeah, it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need it. It's like it's too much weight. Yeah. But it's and the whole point, too, is you don't. The knowledge of what you're not disappears when the what you're not weakens. You don't need the knowledge. You only needed it when the light was getting reflected to this fucking false moon. Now that you recognize the moon is just a rock, it's not a it's not a cause or a source of light. Yeah, that's all the knowledge you needed. I don't need to study the moon anymore. Yeah. All I needed to study the moon is when I was taking it to be the sun. I don't take it to be the sun anymore. There's no need to have knowledge about it. Except if you're in a seat assignment and sharing it. Yeah. Yeah. So like the sort of fuck it that can be mistaken for relaxation. Are you saying that that's like trying to use? I mean, I'm just trying to, maybe I'm confusing what you're saying. The selfing using it. The selfing is claiming, let's say you're in a pause or you're feeling pretty peaceful uh -huh. and nothing's happening. So yeah. the agitation of the head is 
getting more agitated because it ah. doesn't like that. Yeah, I see. okay, okay, okay. So it, wants, it makes it into something. So okay. it says, oh, this is really a fuck it, so let's go have a drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to like make something up almost. Just to. It's, always make, it's not almost, it's always making shit up. Okay. Yeah. A lot of people think excitement is anxiety. They do. They can't even recognize the difference between when you're excited about something or you're anxious about something. Who knows? It could be exactly the same energy. The head's yeah. just the head is just slapping names on shit with no fucking evidence. Yeah. And then we just it feeds us this bullshit and we live as if it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the slapping of the name and the mistaking or confusing anxiety for whatever, all, all these feelings, we're not sure what it is. So fuck it, it's just an, an example of that or, or can exactly. be. Really, I'm not trying to pin it down, but yeah. What does that show you? Let's say like, what would, it, what would you went to work, yeah? You were there at eight o'clock and you left at five and then at 6.30 that night, your head tells you how the day was. What does that imply? That you were so out to lunch, you didn't know what was happening while it was happening? You have to wait for this propaganda channel to tell you how your day was? Yeah, for many people, that's the case. Yes? Yeah, I see that. I see these are all similar things. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, so everything has a message in it. The only way these things could be so, in a sense, is us being out to lunch. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what's, what's, and we're, we can't be out to lunch, we're here. So what's, what's causing an appearance that we're out to lunch that has no reality other than the reality you breathe in it by have, believing it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It shows how, what's, the real role we play here, which is we are the dreaming of the dream, the dreaming of it. We're not, we're not in something else's dream. We're not, yes, we are the act of dreaming. We're, this is, we're, we're some powerful mojo, you know, you know, pointing at this little shell of a frame, thinking it's me, 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 all the while some heavy duty voodoo's going on. We're making shit out of nothing all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The head is we're, to, we're calling anxiety. We're talk, We're calling excitement anxiety. Yeah, so, yeah. so the idea that you oh, <laughs> it's just insane to me. So how could that all be going on unless we were involved in it? If we are the giver of all the meanings everything has, then we have a role in it. Yeah, not as the selfing, but as what we are literally. So yeah, it's interesting to follow the the fist that's punching you and it leads back to <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I find that was quite liberating because then the the basis of blame is gone because nothing's fucking ever done no one's ever done anything to me in reality. Yeah. 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 So the head will keep living a life based on blame, but you won't, which yeah, is the yeah. good yeah. Yeah, thanks. I see the echoes of the same thing in all those examples. Yeah, that's all. That's yeah, see, yeah. and where does where does all those echoes hit? We're us. We're it. You know, we're it. Yeah. Not yeah. as this little life size action figure, but as the activity of dreaming, and then the inactivity of stillness. Yeah, we're it. Yeah, jeez. You can't put your finger on anyone else. You want to call it God. I don't know, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, so, so yes, there's a fine line between fuck it, it's just like the skin and the snake, from the skin's point of view, when the skin starts falling off or melting, it's fucking Armageddon, from the snake's point of view, it's yeah, yeah. that's what it's like, Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, you're going to constantly hear the Armageddon, but you'll sense the hallelujah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not going to be held up and propped up by thought. You're going to feel it. And after yeah. a while, yeah, like yeah. somebody used to put it out, the language of the heart, I think it's a little too sappy for me, but it's sort of like that. You start picking up, 
you're being informed all the while listening to the propaganda. You're being formed from another center that's not using language. It's yeah, more yeah. sense, yeah, a feeling of something. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Not of a thing, but a feeling in you, a sense. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And so now you got Jesus. Who would have thunk there's other options than listening to everything about me? Yeah. Yeah. But there are plenty. Well, right. thanks. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Happy fuck it. <laughs> My new holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Happy fuck it is the new holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Have a very, very <laughs> happy bucket. <laughs> all your sorrows, all your thoughts will be in the bucket. And you'll tell that fucking parasite to suck it. Happy, happy, happy. Fuck it. <laughs> I haven't written the second chorus yet, so let's move on. <laughs> All right, Mike, you ready? Uh, yeah, Javi is here. And oh, Javi, Javi, how are you, Javi? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Um, happy holidays. Um, well, uh, I do have a question about the body because I, I've been yeah, enjoying this traveling lighter, this um, losing interest and attention, right? And and watching the 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 trees, either the fruits coming from the tree, right? Knowing the fruits from the from the tree, and 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 uh, all of a sudden it's. Uh, uh, I've been feeling sick, right? Uh, and I, I realized I have, you know, I have no idea about the body. The, the, it seems like uh, now that the battle with the thought system seems to be over and, you know, more <laughs> lightness and happiness still uh, starts pouring over. Uh, now, it, it, it seems like a shift of, of the battle, like the parasite, has moved to the to the body because I, I go to sleep and and then have all sort of nightmares and it's it's crazy I cannot barely sleep and then I when I wake up it's like I've been running over by a car twice right it's like it's very fatiguing and it's uh, and I just realize I'm I'm just clueless uh, because it helped me a lot all your guidance and and your pointers. Uh, towards the thought system, right? Uh, uh, losing interest and attention. But when the body gets sick, interest and attention seems to be even stronger than with the mind and the thought system. I just don't know mm, the identification with the body. I really don't know what to do. It seems like a totally different ball game to me. Yeah, but the, you're, it's, you're in both of the games though. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. you're aware of the joy and the light, and then there's awareness of the body's uh, discomfort and how the mind, the mental state runs towards it and tries to, yeah, it's, it's hovers over it like flies around shit, yeah? But the one constant was an awareness of both conditions, yeah? Now... The both conditions have been claimed by the head and it's been pointing out that there's a, there was a hobby that was really enjoying in the one condition and there's a hobby that's not enjoying this, the next condition. Yeah. But you're not that hobby. Yes. This is a, what the selfing is and the message is, is to see what's claimed to be the embodiment of the reaction to an event isn't you. Yeah. Yeah. There wasn't a hobby that was enjoying the joy. There was just joy enjoying joy. Yeah. And there isn't a hobby being crippled by the body sensations. That's also made up. 
Now, it may or may not bring you any relief from the body sensations, but it will in time if you entertain it, yeah? It's exact, the approach is exactly the same. I mean, the same neutrality. Exactly the same, but see, we don't, again, a lot of people get a clarity about the objectified self, but they don't see the activity of selfing that's implying to be the observer of the objectified self. As if you have something that's not going on under glass and you're studying it, it's going on while you're studying it. Selfing continually is implying a you, yeah? So you don't capture the you it implied and then do an autopsy of it and try to get knowledge about it. You capture the second activity of the selfing, yeah? As the thief and the policeman, you see both. There was the Javi that was enjoying the light and this and that, and now there's the Javi that's not enjoying the experience of being ill as a body. You're neither of those. Yeah, you're that which is before that. That's what's going to give levity or lightness to both aspects of life. Traveling lighter isn't that everything gets great. Traveling lighter just allows you to travel lighter th through whatever life has in store for this action figure, which is a lot of physical sensations and emotional sensations and a lot of shit like that. Yeah, this isn't to get out of jail free card. There's no jail to get out of in a way. Yeah, so this is, you just, it allows you to travel light. And then after you go through a couple of these phases, you'll come to an understanding, hopefully that what more do you fucking want? Yeah. See, a part of you called Javi wants to be totally removed of anything that bothers it. Yeah, you don't see it's the source of bother. Look at what Howard Hughes did. Howard Hughes had the money, yeah? Had a totally hermetically sealed place, had Kleenex boxes on his, with, to be his shoes, never went out, but there was Howard Hughes. <laughs> he got to the real root of the problem. He was left with it by itself. He think, I'm never, I don't want to meet any germ, I don't want to have any this, da, da, da. But there he was, seemingly. The selfing was having a field day. <laughs> the guy went fucking crazy. <laughs> and he went to great lengths not to, really. I mean, and he had the wherewithal to do it. Yeah. So this isn't about that. You're not going to win. If there's any possibility of losing, you can't win. Yeah. The winning is before losing and winning. Yeah. It's a it's a state of neutrality in a sense. It's not a state, it's a fact, really. Yeah. No, I, the, I... the head can't land there. You see, the head is of Tunis. Yeah. We're not. We're not of Tunis. We keep living as the head and trying to get to its heaven which is to have all the feeling it's like stabilized and never to have a bad feeling. Yeah, that's not how it works. Yeah. No, that, that was clear to me about feelings, you know, because I, I talked to you about this and it, it was very clear, you know, darkness mm, or light or whatever, you know, it's, it's included, it's all included. It just caught me totally unaware the, the fact of we have a body and the body gets sick, right? And it, oh my God, you know, yeah, I didn't that's know. That's why we also have like Netflix. So you can get, distract yourself from the body condition. That's why we have uh, electric blankets to make the body warmer. That's why we have herbal teas. And yeah, no, I, actually, my question was, it, do I have to apply the same tools that I use for the thought system than for the... No, you don't have to do anything, bro. Just ask the question, who is it that thinks it has to do something? Maybe you're not, if you're not that, maybe those rules it has to be that which has to do something will be lifted. Who knows, yeah? But it has nothing to do with what comes after or asking, who is it that's placed before everything? Is that you? 
Yeah, if you wanted the tried and true methodology, if you want to escape in a weird way, or at least feel a pause of all that machinations, just ask, who am I? Or from whence do I come? Yeah, you'll have no answer. It may not bring you any relief, but it will, it will stop something that you think is you, and you will continue. Yeah. And hopefully something, some kind of uh, impression will be men, made and that will seek expression down the road. Yeah. This is a delivery of the message. The message impresses something on it, on us. And then there's a drive in duality to express. So now you start expressing lighter, lightness while you travel. Because the ideas were impressed upon this whole event like this little cement patch, yeah, before it dried. And now, all right, now you heard, you understood the message. The, and the message isn't for an aspect of self to have knowledge about another aspect of self. It isn't. It's about there is no self, yeah. So there's no hobby that was there enjoying the joy, and there's no hobby that's going through the pain. This will bring about a lightness through both events. Yeah. The head uses the body as the big convincer of its story. Yeah. It's got all its money on this bet. So when you feel shitty as a body, it feels as real as real can be. It can basically wash out 50 spiritual books you've, re you've read. Yeah, like that. Yeah, because the game is rigged in a way. Because in time, that which is coming and going seems to be most important. It does. We're trying to live as a blip. Yeah, we want to continue a blip. We came and we're going. But in the timelessness, that's where the relief really lies. And that's what we're of. We're of timelessness. Yeah. The mental state is in time, manufactured through time, yeah, and uses time for its own agenda, yeah. When you're feeling great, time flies by. When you feel shitty, it's take it's going on and on and on. Do you think time has a gear that it just fucks with you with? It goes into reverse, then the first, then the fourth. No, it's us. We're dreaming, yeah. So yeah, take what you need to take for the met, you know, the illness and shit. Yeah. Don't try to apply non-duality like a, a Tylenol. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's just something to keep going back to because the, the soundness of the presentation of non-duality will withstand all this bullshit. It will. The soundness of the message. I'm not, it's not my message. It's message. Yeah. The soundness of the negation of two-ness is not to be underestimated, yeah? So all these events are giving you a ringside seat to see two-ness in action, yeah? The mental aspect of Javi can't stand the physical pain. What happens? It starts disassociating from the body. Now you're fucking totally out to lunch. The body becomes like a storage unit. You're incapable of having a relationship with other people and shit like that. Do you think the body caused that? No. The body's being used by the mental state. Yeah. And the use is being camouflaged as you, basically. Yeah. So question that you. You don't keep questioning it. Things get revealed, yeah? I don't sit ho at home all day asking, who am I? <laughs> I don't. I'm just living life today, then I do a Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Javi, take it easy. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Javi, I'm just going to insert really quick that it's, uh, there's a, 
lesson that was cool in ACIM that sickness is just an attack against the truth. And it's so weird because, I mean, like if you think you're the one that's sick, that it, that can be an extra burden. Oh my God, I'm attacking, I'm attacking truth, as opposed to like the flavor that you know that Paul shares here. That it, oh, it's just, it's no different than anything else. So right. even if I'm feel sick, it's not it's not being used differently by the mental state, and it's just like nothing else. So like you know like the way that you did it with feelings that you that feels comfortable for you. It's just the same thing. I don't know. I just, anyway, I just wanted to throw in how I had that experience with that lesson in ACIM that on the one hand, what, what I'm not, you know, hated that lesson. It was such, such, a, <laughs> such a, an extra burden to hear sickness is just an attack against the truth. Yeah. But now it's just what, all what Paul just said. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Because see, when the, when the selfing is reading the ACIM or saying it's the reader of it, it sees that it's the one that's doing that. Yeah. And there isn't any one that's doing it. What you're seeing is programming. Yeah, let's call it that. This reaction leads to this reaction, leads to this reaction. And all the while, each reaction is claimed to imply there's you that's reacting in the wrong way, or da 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 da. -da. It's just a way of piling on to this obsessiveness, this addiction to self, really. Yeah. That the mental state is in. And Ben has his hand up. Go ahead, Ben. Thank you, Paul, all the time. Thank you very much. And Mike, of course, you know, it's like commander. <laughs> uh, this is like dating. Each person goes to the date, but each one brings itself to the date. So each bring what they want from it. At the end of the day, the best date you can have is with yourself. That, at the same time, you're creating it. So there's nobody there at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. I like the background. Oh yeah, I have uh, this. No, and this is better. Look, look, I'm a disappearing self. Look, look, look. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh yeah, I like that. I hope it stays like. I hope it stays like this. Oh, why did you come back? <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you, Ben. Cool. Thank you, Paul. Yes, you're welcome. We got uh, to raise your hand. We got Drew. Drew is uh, in Wisconsin there, behind the wheel of something. Yes. Why is a lot of our people are either truck drivers or they're doing, they're bringing in contraband from Mexico or something? Hey, we got to make a living. All right, anyone? No? James, I see James. Are you, uh, have you been here before, James? Me? Yes. Yes, I come okay. every Saturday, yeah. I just oh, sit at the back of the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you, how are you, uh, well, you're fine. Let's move on to the next person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, how about George, George Bianchi? Nice to see you, George. Nice to see you, Paul. How are you? Good, pretty good, man. We got Anna from Anna from Chicago, and yes. We got Norman, Norman from Germany. Joel, where is Joel Goff from? I've driven that road a lot, Goff. Hey, Paul, I'm in Virginia, just outside DC. Oh, Virginia, all right. And we got Helen here from uh, Northern England. Josh from somewhere, he's on vacation, I think, still from Melbourne. We got Verena. Verena, have you been here before? I think so. Yes. Got an interesting color back there. Or uh, anyone else? We got Hank is here again, Chris. We got, uh, I'm going to miss name you. Emmanuel, Emmanuel from uh, Spain. Nice to see you. We got Nina. 
Rich Hume, we got Maggie P, the Desert Wilderness Cabin. Well, it's very, very descriptive. Uh, I like Desert Wilderness. We got uh, Krish, Krish B. We got Satish has returned, never to be forgotten. Lorraine and Mark, Maggie, Navdeep, John, Izzy, Izzy. Happy holidays, Izzy. Nancy. Oh, oh there is another hand up. Uh, it's, a, it's a second Ben. Sorry, Ben. The second Ben. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you, uh, Tarek, that just told me that. Uh, hey, it's the second coming of Ben. How's oh. everybody doing? <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I've been um, having, you know, this experience lately, or I, I guess I haven't been having it, but it's been happening. Yeah. That, I'm, that I, I walk in the woods and like uh, often just my mind just drops, you know, and, and uh, it feels like real clear that there's just these thoughts floating in and, in and out of the space of awareness and there's senses and there's, uh, you know, breath and that none of it really has a central self that's uh, experiencing all that. It's just happening, you know, in, in awareness. Um, yes. I guess he, he's in the woods again. <laughs> ben has entered the woods again. We've lost. Uh, did I? Did I get? Oh, what did you? What you catch? Sorry. Um, am I? Can you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. Then we just lost the first, the, the last few seconds, and then now you're back. You okay. were in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in the woods, and like, I mean, it's great, you know. Like, yeah. selfing feels just like it's just what it is, you know, and and. and uh, not always, but like a lot of the time. And then uh, I come back into the, into my house and I feel like I'm around the things that kind of trigger me. And I, I get like right back into just fully being a confused, crazy self and thinking that that's true and having the sense of that being true. And my whole body getting filled with anxiety. And uh, I guess, you know, what I've been thinking lately is like, it seems like there's something, um, you know, to really stabilize in this in this place of reality, maybe it takes like some retraining of the nervous system to just settle, you know, maybe that's what happens in the woods that my nervous system just relaxes and I'm not around all the things that are triggers that appear like, like tigers in my mind, you know, and then I come back into my home and it's like all those imaginary tigers are back again and I'm, and there's like a self that has to pop up to, defend against them or something, you know? And it's just, so I guess what I'm wondering is, is there something I need to do to like settle my, my nervous system, settle my body to just like Well, it sounds, it sounds like it's getting settled by the woods and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Make it a habit of taking walks. Yeah, yeah. And then that will lead you to getting different downloads and you'll know what to do next, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's how I go with it. Yeah, I just follow uh, something that leads me, yeah, and I, as an action figure, and uh, I can tell the difference between, you know, the two stations, so to speak, yeah, and pretty much sometimes I can't help but listen to the one station, to hear the one station, but the other one I'm being directed by, yeah, so... Yeah. Yeah, and it, uh, but but if you find something that works like that, the woods, yeah, I become, I would be a frequent visitor of the woods for a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because whatever happens doesn't, is not left in the woods, it comes with you. It's, you know, you're giving the meaning to the woods, not the woods giving the meaning to you. And so it, it comes with you, and it's just, uh, you know, like the, we say in recovery, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. But the mm. fact is, where where all of these 
things are, are coming from, we're all rooted in, you know, we are that. Yeah. 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 So that's, that would be my suggestion with it. Cool. Like, like when I was younger, uh, when I was younger, you know, I've always, the action figure always liked water. Yeah. So then I became, you know, I entered into drug addiction and, water wasn't part of the equation too much except for the spoon and shit. Uh, <laughs> so, and then I got sober again and I got reintroduced back to, to the water. And then my legs were severely damaged, but after a few years of recovery, I could put fins back on my feet, especially this one really bad one. And I went back boogie boarding again, you know? So, and then I just, Every time I went in the water, I just had a big fucking smile. Yeah, like a little kid. Very, basically never failed. And then I just did as much as I could of boogie boarding until I something got damaged and I can't do that as yeah. much. And so, yeah, that's how life goes. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't. I don't mourn for something I used to love to do. I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to do it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and everything here is finite. So some of the things I love to do came to an end. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there's other things I love to do. Things change. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I think we get a, you're going to respond to, uh, like we call in recovery, good orderly direction. You are. You, <laughs> the action figure is going to become, uh, a lot of its coiled upness will, will release. And if it needs something to happen for that release to occur, you'll run into those things that, will ha that need to happen. Yeah? Yeah, yeah? yeah. Not just that you'd go great, just that you'll be of maximum use to yourself and others here. Yeah, you'll be, you know, we are present and therefore we're available. And if you're present and available, you're of service. You know, it's just, that's the way it goes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When you're in the, when you're up the ass of self, then there's doing service to get a little relief of that up the ass of self, but doing <laughs> service isn't the uh, isn't the only possibility you can be of service yeah mm. there's a lot of and these these are parts of like uh there's a lot of beauty in time yeah so like what would happen if nothing if you bought an orchid and it was it never bloomed or yeah. was always blooming. So it's beautiful to watch it bud and then it takes a long, it takes its own sweet time to open up and da -da -da. it's unbelievable. The same thing as an action figure. The action, an action figure can be changed. Yeah. What yeah. you thought was just you and you were always going to be that way, you won't be that way in time. Yeah. Hmm. That's beautiful. And then you, you appreciate the artist and you're like the art project and you, you appreciate what's working on you. Yeah, you do. I mean, I've had tons of those episodes in this life. I did, you know, I didn't end up in a cave. I'm living with a woman with four kids a sick cat, a dog, a puppy, tons of shit going on. I thought that was all past in my past, but life had a different plan for me. And it, all the shit that gets brought out, I'm so happy to have the experience of. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's really, I mean, I think a lot of us, if you really look at your life, you didn't get gypped. I mean, I've had a lot of life, a lot of shit, a lot of great stuff. It's just been... Uh, yeah, I'm just, I really love to know it's finite and it's, it's not the end all and be all. It allows a lot more spontaneity to take you. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, this whole message is really, in a way, the effects of the message are for the action figure. It is, yeah. Awareness doesn't need to travel lighter. Yeah. yeah. Awareness doesn't need to be to have an enlightenment that it's aware. It is aware. <laughs> it's here 
where we seemingly are unaware of shit, it's a joy to become aware of stuff. Yeah, that's part of the fun. And it allows this thing to travel later. And all the effects lead to other facts that you can't directly get to. It, they lead, everything leads, intimates other stuff, yeah, in my, in my feeling, yeah? Just like we were talking to John in the beginning, look at all the activities and then see what these things are implying, yeah? And then, and then there's a recognition of, oh, that implying is how things are ob obscured. And now you've seen what you're not and you've seen it as an activity. And you don't take, and it's not personal. There's no person. And uh, yeah, so take a walk in the woods. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. The other Ben. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Josh S is up. I'm afraid to, to think of what's around the next Ben. <laughs> All right, who's next? Uh, Josh is. Oh, yeah, Josh. Right here, Josh. Yes, Josh. Uh, my, my question is about trust. So is, is there a process of trust that happens as we sink deeper into the into the message because i because i think what um what i've uncovered recently is just that i've i realized like i'd kind of seen myself as a victim of circumstances all for part of my life and and once i sort of started realizing it it just started dissipating but i you know it's now i was like what do i replace it with i'm like oh well trust no just stop so, there just stop at just the stop there Good. Yeah. There's plenty of faith. There was faith in being the victim to, of circumstances. And now that faith is being moved to something, to another idea. Yeah. You don't need to do anything about it. You're just watching the process of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Why would you want to use this, you know, the self-centeredness is like a formatted way. And if you get a recognition that the self-centeredness isn't having a problem, it is the problem, then uh, <laughs> when stuff starts happening outside of that system, just allow it to fucking happen. Don't, don't try to apply the system to make it happen faster or better. It's just going to fucking fuck it up. In a so way. don't apply self-centeredness to fix <laughs> what was a self-centered point of view of being a victim. Okay. Exactly. That's the point. Yeah. See, Observing stuff does it isn't always a call to arms about doing anything. You just observe, and I hope you've reached a certain point where you've seen uh, your role in things on a certain more uh, expansive level and recognize, hey, it doesn't matter how I paint or what I paint, the painting is the obscuring. Yeah, so all right. I'm going to just sort of observe shit and observe more shit and observe more shit and I'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Thanks. This thing with the knees, with the knee, uh, couple of operation on the knees. So then I tried a lot of, to, I did tried a lot of stuff to change, to cause an effect, you know, because the, the effects from the operation were worse than before the operation. So, and then I hit a point where something just stopped all that. And then I haven't done anything about them for years. And they seem to do a lot better. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Now, maybe I'll get another bit of information and it'll be time maybe to do something again 
but I haven't got that yet. So I stick with the plan, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's a recognition of what you're not affects and then what you're not claims to be the one who recognized those effects, yeah? Yeah, just keep, it's just, you know, when you fall back and then you're caught by self, you can go right through that, yeah? Just fall back and then you'll really be in good hands, yeah? Yeah. All right, bro. I don't know where you are, but have a wonderful time there. I don't know where I am either. Good. That makes two of us. All right, anyone next one? Thanks, Josh. Anybody else want to raise their hand? Oh, James by chat. James by chat. Oh, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, hi, Paul. Sorry. I didn't know whether or not I could get this to work. Um, you have, I, yeah. Excellent. Um, I've been listening to your talks on YouTube. And the very last one, uh, you talked briefly about death. Um, and how the fear of death is somehow, um, it's like a manifestation of um, the self. And that struck a chord with me. I yes. can't explain. It's like a recognition, even though I don't understand. It's very strange. No, that's great. That's the best understanding. It's like I can't understand it intellectually, but I know it's important. And I don't know why. Well, good. Stay in, stay in the dark. It's better. Okay. This is how you find, this is how you find out stuff. You don't rush to something. You let it come to you. See what happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you, you, a bell was rung, let it reverberate. Yeah. And then when you see the kind, see what used to happen, let's say with me, I would go on these talking tours. Yes. Right. And talk maybe like I never did a talk, but you know, I went through this process and maybe 12 or 15 talks, I get home and I could feel, uh, the reverberation of the action figure this these two weeks set off like some uh, stones hitting the pond yeah and these rings of stuff were reverberating and i i knew i would recognize uh i would recognize the effect of that that condition for months after yeah right it was beautiful it was beautiful to see i had nothing to do with any of it it didn't call me to have to do anything about it. And I just watched, I watched what was going on. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, like in Zen, they call the, I don't know mind, the highest form of mind. Yeah. It's a very beautiful thing where uh, the sense of something's more than enough. It doesn't trigger me wanting to find out a lot of knowledge about it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I just go with the, I guess go with the sense because I felt like I've, the sense has reverberated in a certain frequency so many times. There's been a recognition, even by the action figure that, uh, <laughs> being quite open to be directed by that frequency, so to speak. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. Coming back if you like. Thank you. Yeah. You also yeah. mentioned, uh, when you spoke about that, you also mentioned about guilt and that how that's related as well. The like guilt, the heaviness, uh, the heaviness the guilt of guilt. Of, well, th that was presented to me, uh, well, I felt that a lot, but uh, the clearest presentation to me about that was through the Course of Miracles. There, the, you know, have the hear of the Course of Miracles? Briefly, yes. Yeah, well, there one of the main movements of this dreaming is, is uh, rooted in guilt. Yeah. There's a guilt of that. We believe we did something to separate from 
let's say God, yeah, which is an impossibility, right. but by hap but entertaining that to be possible, it's produced a lot of guilt. And so we're trying to get rid of the guilt by projecting it on others. And we're trying to find perpetrators so we can wear an innocent face here. Yeah. Right. So we love to hear about people that are worse motherfuckers than we are. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like, it's sort of, uh, yeah. So, uh, but I didn't know, but what, did I say anything about guilt concerning the fear of dying? No, but you mentioned it immediately afterwards. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it felt relevant, and I can't explain why. Yeah, is well, it, it is, that's why. <laughs> if it's, it felt that way, it's relevant to you or into, in the condition that you are at, yes? It's relevant then. That's how you follow. Those are like the highlighted statements in a book, yes? Yeah. You follow those. You follow those when it hits you a certain way, uh, it's nice to be keen about that. Yeah, there's something but, that's there. Yeah. Because um, there's something also, I mean, you only mentioned it briefly. It was just like a few seconds. And just before you spoke about death, you mentioned what you are is before, during, and after this temporary apparent yeah. goes. Yes. And again, there was a strong recognition of that as well very valuable yes very because that was see what's afraid of dying is not us yeah what's afraid of dying is not us it's the mental apparition it's the mental idea of you that's super afraid of dying because it's put off off so much shit and it wants it doesn't want to miss out in doing anything which it's never going to do anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It just wants to keep selfing. <laughs> so there was a nice statement once, if you've truly lived, you won't be afraid of dying for sure. But if let's say if you all you've lived as an interpretation, then in, in the interpretation, dying is a no, no. <laughs> it's not something to be looking forward to. <laughs> right. You want more time <laughs> to do exactly what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're living at what's being presented in the head is a continuance of an interpretation that could be framed as self centeredness. Yeah. So basically, right. the whole story about what's happening is how it pertains to us. And the us that it's, is the target of all that pertaining isn't us. Yeah. <laughs> so it's having its reactions. And unfortunately, many of us for year after year have called its reactions our reactions. And therefore are giving the reaction a lot more influence and power than it actually has. Yeah. Right. Yes, because usually we, we don't give a shit about other people's reactions. We give a whole lot of shit about our reactions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. OK. Yeah. You see that? So there's a bondage to the idea of being the one. It's not it's not it doesn't stand alone. It's constantly propped up by the mental state. Yeah. The idea. Right. So non-duality is a statement from a fact about an assumed fact. So we're not trying to explain the fact of non-duality, but it's, it's of fact, and where it's attempting to negate the assumed fact. So it's putting into question the facts that have been assumed by a huge assumption, so to speak. And when you see a couple of the cards of the, of the house of cards fall, there's a critical mass where you realize it's a house of cards, yeah? Right. Yes, there's no solid foundation there at all. It's made up, constantly made up, reinforced and assumed. That's the whole engine of selfing. See, the selfing is always saying you already are a self, yeah? 
right? It's never saying you're in the process of becoming a self. It says you already are something. And therefore, in its logic that we're claiming to be ours, the only way uh, if self is so irritating, restless, and, uh, and causing discomfort, then the only thing I can do is try to get out of it. Yeah? Right. Yeah. I can't entertain that which is before the assumption of being in it. I immediately go to the default, which is I got to get out of this. So you do drugs, you do spirituality, shit like that. And then hopefully after you blamed yourself for all the failures of those escapes, you realize you can't escape from an imaginary place and especially as an imaginary thing. Yeah. So therefore uh, <laughs> you see the, there's, there's never been a self. Yeah. Right. And you're not becoming one and you never, and you're not starting as one. Yeah. Right. So, but the mechanism of selfing doesn't give you a present tense picture of the act of becoming self. It gives you a fake picture that you are one already. Okay. Yeah? This is the, and this is, it's, this, how it develops this picture is a trick in time. So basically, this activity of the head that I call selfing claims what's ever happening, let's say an action or a thought or a seeing or hearing, to imply that there's a seer of the, of the uh, seeing, there's a thinker of the thought, there's a feeler of the feeling. And that feeler is a historical feeler. You've been that feeler. It just didn't yeah. arise now. You've been there feeling tons of shit all these years and thinking tons of shit. And so it bonds you to this idea of being Paul uh, through this activity of claiming and remembering and picturing you as a historical thing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because so that, yeah. I mean, is this, is this to do with, trying to be present do you, do you know what i mean like, trying to be present is is an affirmation of the impossibility that you could be out of the moment so now everyone wants to get into the moment that they fervently believe they can be out of i don't believe you can be out of a moment so it's just that when i uh see what i am and there are moments of clarity it feels like an intense presence well, it is. It's not intense, though, because it's always, it's always presence. Sometimes when something's intense, it gets focused. It's right. just a giant field of presence. It may seem to be intense to you because of your lack of, a, of awareness of it. But I understand. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not an intense state. It can be an intense experience in this state that we're seemingly in. But when you're resting in that state... Uh, it's not really intense. The reaction of this state to it will be maybe, but it's not. No, I don't because, see it. Because the one thing about guilt, as you say, about spirituality is, is that I try to be more present. Yeah. Yes. And that, I, I can see that that's, a, that's kind of a trap, you know, like. Well, then, that's one of the many traps. They're the same trap, but there's, one, there's many of them there. Yeah. Well, then let me use this statement by Ramana Maharshi, a great master. He, he first puts out this idea that there's this presupposing of a non-existent thing. And let's say, why is it being presupposed? Basically, that it's existing, really, that it's you. So there's a presupposing of a non-existent thing that wants to get salvation for the non-existent thing. So if this is the unknown activity that's going on. So he's just revealed it. And then he says, now something that can be known, your spiritual practices, without you knowing it, are being used to reinforce the non-existent thing. How can they destroy it? Do you see it right. there? Yeah. Yeah. So you see your spiritual practices. So you believe that they're doing something that they actually might not be used to be doing. They're being used to be doing something else, which is reinforcing the imaginary Paul instead of, so how can they actually destroy the imaginary Paul? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is 
uh, this is just a statement. You're meant to put it on and see if it fits. Yeah. And f for me, the shoe fits. So I, I kept wearing it. Yeah. I mean, is it possible? I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Sometimes it feels intellectual. And sometimes I worry that I'm not hearing it to the core. Oh, no, the hearing it, well, see, the intellect is one of the mail slots on the door we're trying to break through. So, yeah, it may get waylaid to the intellect, but the message got in. So don't worry about it because it never got out, really. It's always there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, bro. Thanks, James. Anybody else want to raise their hand? If not, I'll say uh, goodbye. Uh, let's see, Mike, Mike, nice to see you, Mike Savini. One of the, uh, the old, the old Zoomites. Yes. And we got Christine from Youngstown. Nice to see you, Christine. I've been in Youngstown. Is it Youngstown, Pennsylvania or Ohio? Uh, I live in Iowa. Iowa, but... there's Youngstown there. I guess there's a lot of them. No, I, my last name is Youngstrom. What? <laughs> my last name is Youngstrom. Oh, that's your name. I thought I made it seem to seem like Youngstown. <laughs> I, uh, I, I do live by me. I may need glasses. Whatever. <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you, honey. Yes, yes. Nice Why to meet you. Why not? All right. So we got Suzanne. I'm not going to say anything else. Suzanne, nice to see you. Ben, the poet laureate, is uh, he does his best writing laying down. Tariq, nice to see you, Tariq. I hope all is well. Yeah, and if not, it's still all is well. There's Ben doing some kind of Shambhala dance. Yes, I don't. It's I don't. It's getting a little too personal for me. Here we go. We got Drew H from Wisconsin. Nice to see you, Drew. We'll have to run into each other personally, hopefully, one day. We got Sylvester Fraser, the man before the blinds. <laughs> we got Raven from uh, British Columbia. Always a pleasure, Raven. Thank you for the donations, everybody, also. We got Norman from Germany. Nice to see you, Norman. Always a pleasure. Thanks for hanging out with us all these months. Really appreciate your presence. We got uh, George. Nice to see you, George. Then we got James, who I thought was never here before. Nice to see you, James. And always a pleasure. Tuesday, and thank you for your donation and stuff. We got Verena. Nice to see you, Verena. Again, a little bit. The atmosphere is nice, though. There she is. Hank. We got Nico, Nico coming from the blast from the past. Nice to see you, Nico. We got a uh, Krish, Krish B. Nice to meet you, Krish. Yep. Imanol, I hope I don't get it too bad from Spain. Nice to see you. Pleasure to meet you. Chris, as always. Yeah. We got Glenda O'Driscoll. Uh, my favorite lass from Ireland. Yes. We got Josh S. doing something. I don't know what. Oh, there he is. He's in his pajamas. Sarah. Sarah has actually got a moon in her room. She's got one. That's pretty nice. She rented it. it looks pretty good. We got, we got, 